Welcome to Political Science 100. Uh, the summer term is going to be a great term. I know we just ended a really uh, a rough uh, period of time, so um, hopefully this transition will be a little bit smoother for you. Um, I want to let you know I'm Dr. Tucker. I'm uh, I really am this dorky. See my little bow tie and everything. Um, I've recorded some some videos for all the chapters, and you get to see I get to wear a different bow tie each time. Uh, I'm excited about summer class. Uh, I love being able to teach a lot about American government in a very short period of time. I've also designed the course for you so that you can enjoy it in a way that is um, at your own pace to a certain extent. The best part about being able to have a summer class is to have some flexibility in your time. And I know you have a lot of flexibility in your time right now, but um, I wanted to show you um, why why the course is set up the way it is and give you a brief overview of, of how the course will work. So we're going to use Canvas, and Canvas is a new system. It was uh, We were using Titanium. We're still using Titanium for some classes. Um, and when you when you go to your portal, then you'd go to your classes, and they would pop up here in Titanium, and everything would be the same. Um, it should work the same way with Canvas. So you'd go, you know, you log into your portal, and you click on your courses, and then you should show up to something like your dashboard. And your dashboard will have a list of classes that you have. So I put this very patriotic eagle and you know, American flag, America stuff. Uh, you just click on click on your little link there. And it'll take you to to your um, to your course, and I'm going to switch to what the students see, so you can see that a little bit better. Yours will look just like this. Um, the course has a um, um, a navigation bar along the left hand side that you that we'll go through in a little bit. Um, on the right hand side, you should have all of these to do items with their designated due dates. The due dates are is uh, is important. Um, this will. I would hope that you will work a little bit in advance, but if not, on the right here, you should be able to sort of chart out the very last day that you can do these things. Almost all of these end at 11.59 p.m. on the day that they're due. You can also click here on the View Course Calendar, and the calendar will populate with the things that are due. The very first thing that's due is actually due on Jan uh, June 1st. It's going to populate. It's going to take a second, which is a quiz on the syllabus. Is that, that's actually the quiz that's worth the most. Um, as an individual question quiz. And then you can see that different days have different things that are due, um, but I've tried to space them out so that you have about two days to do each chapter. I would prefer that you start now, but you are allowed to do that however you want. You can also access the calendar on the left-hand side here. So I'm going to go to courses really quickly and click to my course again. Um, the course is set up as I would set it up in, in Titanic, Titanium, sorry. Uh, I call it Titanic because it always crashed, and now we're moving to a new system because Titanic always is crashing. Anyway, um, you can see this video here at Course Intro. Uh, here is the Summer uh, 2020 Syllabus. We can open that here, but we can also open it over here on the Syllabus. And here's the quiz that's going to be important for the Syllabus um, uh, for you to take by June 1st. The textbook information is here. It's an interactive ebook. Um, you can, I'm going to show you, there's a little video of how to access that textbook and what to do with it here. Um, and then we start in the chapters. So this is just a little header. Um, this talks a little bit about the chapter. If you buy the, the, the interactive ebook through Vital Source, you can click through this way. Um, this is a presentation. I've recorded all of the chapter presentations for you. Um, let me just show you what that looks like. Um, I'm having a little bit of problems with, with Canvas. Hopefully, the video will show up in here. But if it doesn't show up in here, we can just click here to uh, Chapter 1 Presentation in the Americas, and it shows you, goes right to my YouTube page, and you can play it. I really like YouTube for a couple reasons. You can turn on closed captionings if you really like them, or I know this, you know this, you can change the speed. Imagine that you need to hear it a little bit slower, you can slow it down, or you can speed it up to one and a half speed so that you can go through the chapter a little bit faster if you want. I've tried to condense the, some of the most important parts of the chapter into these lectures, and they'll start with uh, me. In chapter one, we're going to talk about the people. And See, there I am. How about that? Is that crazy or what? Anyway, so um, th that's where you, you'd get to the to those videos. After you're done with watching that video and reading the book, there's some flashcards here if you want. Um, you'll also have a video quiz. The video quiz um, will have a certain number of minutes if you look up here. 
You'll have a certain number of points and a certain number of questions. I want you to watch these videos. They, you'll have to watch them before you start the quiz. And um, you're going to be only be able to see the quiz one time. Uh, only take it one time. So you need to watch these videos and have a pretty good sense of them before you take the quiz because you really only have one question per minute. And these videos are like two or three, pa uh, three minutes long each. Um, so take those and you click take the quiz. It'll pull up a random question about that quiz and you'll answer them. They're all multiple choice, so that's not a, not a difficult problem. Um, after that video quiz, you'll have a chapter quiz. The chapter quiz will be based on the reading and the lecture. And, um, and every chapter has a chapter quiz, every chapter has a video quiz. So not every chapter has an, a, the third component of your grade, which is an essay. If you go to chapter two, if I were doing it, I would take the Constitution Part 1 video, Constitution Part 2 video, I would read the book, I would watch the, oh, these are my lectures, sorry. Um, and then I would watch the videos that are assigned for the chapter in the interactive ebook. Then I would take, uh, take that video quiz, I'd review, answer, ask whatever questions that you have, and take that quiz, um, the chapter quiz there. And then chapter two will have an essay uh, quiz. You have 10 minutes to write an essay uh, on some idea of, about the material covered in that chapter. So if it says chapter two essay, it's only gonna be about the information presented in chapter two. Now, I'm not anticipating that you're gonna write a five page essay in 10 minutes. What I do anticipate is that you'll answer the question directly and be able to provide some meaningful insight into into what's going on in that chapter and about that specific context. Um, so let's imagine that chapter two is about federalism or about separation of powers, or I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff it could be about. Um, or, you know, the drafting of the Constitution, there's a whole bunch of good stuff in there. Um, if it says something like, what were the main motivations of the, of the framers of the Constitution, you can keep your book open. You can keep your interactive ebook open for the essay quizzes. You can keep your interactive ebook open for the video quizzes. You can keep your interactive ebook open for even the chapter quizzes, but you'll really only get um, a short amount of time. So pull whatever information you want there, answer that question, and um, you know hit submit to take that quiz. So each chapter follows the same format. We uh, start with read the book, watch my, vi my video on YouTube, um, Watch the interactive videos, uh, the videos on the interactive ebook. If you look for some flashcards, there's some flashcards for, for the prep for the quiz, take the quiz. If you have questions, you can post them on the discussion board up here. In the discussion forum, you just you know, log in and you just type a reply if you wanted to add something, blah, 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 I don't understand. And then you can post that reply. And um, I should be able to answer that discussion form within 24 hours, or you can send me an email um, and I can answer that question. Let's see, so let's go down to chapter four. In chapter four, you get the first of the current events. And the current events are, you are to find a story out in the popular media. Um, you, gosh, it could be, if you look at my syllabus, it talks about, you know, you can find a Stephen Colbert or a, a late show report within the last year, um, so something within the last year that's talking about a topic that's covered in chapters in this one, one through four. You'll have a current event for five through five through seven and a couple other ones later. Um, but every time you're supposed to find a story and um, post a summary of the story and how it links to the chapter. I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the syllabus. Um, and then you are also supposed to um, reply to one of the one of the posts, and I put a sample post in here um, that I can show you in just a second. Um, so uh, I'll, you know, you'll you'll type it here once again in the reply, and then once you see that, once you've posted, then you'll be able to see what other people have posted, and you reply to that, and then I'll grade the reply based on how well you've understood and watched that, read that that clip. Um, watched the media clip or read that article, integrated that, answered the question that the person initially posed, and sort of engaged the material in a different way. So this is a, a really good, uh, a really good way to um, to engage the material. So you'll have those for chapters one through four, uh, and and a couple of them throughout. 
and then uh, that's more or less that. Now, <clears throat> you have to take the syllabus quiz first. The syllabus is over here, or you can click on it. Here's a, a PDF of it if you wanted to do that. You can download it, and it will populate in here as well. Another way to look at the syllabus, there it is. It's populating right here. Another way to look at the syllabus is just to click on the syllabus side. And uh, this is a different way to look at it. I don't have any in-person uh, office hours. If you want to schedule a Zoom meeting with me, you can. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. Everything's going to take place online. You need to buy the interactive ebook. The ISBN is here. Um, you can either buy it through Vital Source or Red Shelf, and um, you can rent it for about forty dollars, I think, for ninety days. You could also buy it. I would just rent it. Um, if you want to buy a paper version of it, you actually have to also buy the interactive ebook, and this is the bundle number. There's also a recommended text, which is about California. Um, so that's one of the requirements of the class is that you learn about how California is a little bit different than the United States, and that's probably why you're taking it. Um, we are covering a ton of stuff in, in this. We're going to get a good look at government. And what's sad is that most people think they know a lot about how government works, but they don't understand that, that really government is a lot about rules and details. And you have to follow the rules, and the rules are set up in a specific way, and the rules have a backstory on why they're there. So some of the things that we think are really, really easy to solve, like, um, gosh, why can't we get everybody to vote more? Or why can't we elect really important, uh, you know, good, good, solid people? Or why don't we have a third party who's challenging these other parties? Some of those are just a byproduct of how the rules are structured. You know, there's this relationship between the federal government and the state government that, that's really clear in the Constitution, but it's really, really blurry in real life today. And so you'll hear some of that history, and I'm going to ask you to engage in the material um, in a really meaningful way. And hopefully what you'll find is that you've learned a lot about things you maybe hadn't thought about um, in this way, and that you'll actually look back on your old self and say, gosh, you know, I really didn't understand uh, the country I live in or the state I live in. So the course format is online asynchronous. You get to work at your own pace. You should do these sorts of things. Read the appropriate section, post questions about the material, complete each chapter of the assignments, um, do the quiz, do the chapter essay, and continue the next section. So that's the sort of structure. You can do this kind of on your own way. Here's a little bit about Canvas. I have a solid perspective that is immovable about trying to help students. I want to help you. But I don't like go around giving out grades. I'm not a benevolent Santa Claus, like, ha, 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 you earned this or that. Well, no, if you want to score well in the class, I want to help you, but you're going to have to earn the points. And so here's a little table that shows how the distribution of the class is. And current events are about 24% of your grade. Videos are about 13%. The quizzes are 43% and the essays are 20%. Uh, that generally is a good balance for people to um, you know, demonstrate their writing and analysis through the through the uh, current events and the essays, and then also a mastery of knowledge through the quizzes and the video quizzes. Um, this gives you a general idea how to write a current event. I'll, like I said, I have posted a, a sample current event for you. Um, the videos are, are here. It gives you an idea how they're supposed to work, how the quizzes work, how the essays work. Um, just a really important thing, if you ask a question on the internet, um, a, a question to us, um, or you're engaging somebody in a discussion forum, you need to be nice. And I'm sure that you understand this, that you cannot attack another person. You can attack their ideas, and you can say, you know, I really disagree because, but base it on some sort of factual evidence or some criteria like equity or equality or efficiency or economy or some characteristic or quality. So you can say, oh, you know what, that's a good point, but this, or, you know, I really don't think you've looked at it this way. That is very, very polite, but you can't say, well, you're an idiot because you said that, or you're an idiot because you like this. You can't say anybody's an idiot. You can't really mistreat people. And if you do, I have to kick you off, and we have to have a discussion before I can let you back into the class. If you have an emergency or an illness uh, that prevents you from completing the course, please reach out to me. Reach out to me as often as you want. Send me an email. Um, I'm happy to help you. Um, most of the time, I'll, I'll post those things on the discussion forum so that everyone can benefit. I do plus or, minus and there, plus or minus, and there is no extra credit available for the grades. So this is how we distribute the scores. You can look at those. I take academic dishonesty very seriously. Uh, one winter session, there were about 35 students, and I caught uh, at least 22 of them cheating on this specific class. And I've done my very best to make it very hard to cheat.
Um, but if I catch you, I promise that I'll uh, turn you over to judicial affairs. I don't uh, exercise any discretion. I'm like, oh, well, they're a nice student. So, no, no, I just say, this is the evidence that I found, and I send it off to judicial affairs as fast as I can. Because um, you are paying for this. I am, I am uh, being paid to help you reach those standards. And if you're gaining undue influence, or if you are cheating in some way, uh, I just don't, I don't tolerate it. So my syllabus is very, very clear that cheating is very broad and it's under discretion. Now, in terms of what you can do, I encourage you to please open up your book and, you know, during your quizzes, open it up during your essays, open it up during your videos if you want. Be prepared before you take those things, but if you have to find and search those answers, go for it. I don't care. What you are not allowed to do is allow someone else to log in for you. Watch somebody else take the quiz. Um, <laughs> use a, a mechanical device or an electronic device to slow down the timer on your computer so you can have more time for your quizzes. Those things are just cheating. And uh, I will immediately assign you a, a failing grade for that assignment and maybe for the whole class and then send you off to judicial affairs. Please, please, please don't cheat. It's a law of paperwork and it's a massive risk for you. Um, be smart, do your own work. I am very available, uh, 24 hours. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get you an email in 24 hours. I don't respond on Sundays. I spend that time with my family. Um, if you have a disability, please let me know as soon as possible, and I will give you the accommodation that you are entitled to. If that's an extra 50% or an extra, um, extra time on your exams or quizzes, totally fine. Let's do it. Let's get it in there so it's not a problem. And then down here at the bottom, we have a course summary that shows you which quizzes and all those events and when they're due. So if you wanted to go through here on the syllabus tab, you could do that as well. And if we go back to the home part of the class, so you can see where we're at. Um, a lot of students are concerned about their grade, and they'll ask all the time. Uh, I've designed the course in such a way so you can see that pretty easily. If you click over here on the grades link, the um, you're going to arrange the, the, the grades uh, here, and it'll show you the score for every one of them. It tells you how many points each one of them are worth. Down here at the bottom, it'll total these for you. These extra things don't matter. They say NA. And what at the very bottom, you'll get um, how many points you've earned out of how many points have been offered so far. Now, this number will be 1,000. Um, translates pretty quickly to 100. So you look at the total number of points you're at, divided by those, that, that'll give you a percentage. But also, if you're looking to earn a certain score, you can know that um, within a certain range, you've got to earn this many points to get them. And, and I think the points are important, um, but probably a bigger uh, overarching thing for me for, for this class is I really want you to learn the material and engage it in a meaningful way. There's a lot of really cool and important stuff going on in the world, and understanding how this works is, is going to be crucial to some of the success. And you say, well, I just want to go into business. Well, we're going to have a, a chapter on public policy that talks about rules and, and why government um, sets rules to constrain people's behavior. We're going to talk about an appropriate role of government to make sure that people aren't taking advantage of other people. Um, I wanted to go back to the syllabus for one more thing, and that is I want you to be successful, and I don't um, extend deadlines. So if we go down here to the very, very bottom, um, oh, it's not on this one. It's on the PDF version of the syllabus. On the PDF version of the syllabus, I have given you a really, really crucial thing for you to look at. And it's down here, a little bit of the ways. There we are. Um, if you look at these, there is a suggested pace and a real due date. The real due date is the day by which all of the deadlines show up in Canvas. But if you want to enjoy your summer a little bit more, and the way that I do, I want to get this work done. And so I would suggest that by at least the 26th of May, you take the syllabus quiz. And then by the 28th of May, you do the chapter one and the 29th. So this is like an advanced guide that would give you an opportunity to finish the class a little bit faster and to not stress about the deadlines as much. Because if you miss one of these suggested dates, you can always fall back on the, the real due date. But if you miss the real due date, you're, you've lost that opportunity to earn points. So I really want you to pay attention to the suggested pace and even work ahead a little bit more because the course will be open before then. Think about this. You could be done by June 18th, a full eight days early if you follow the suggested pace. 
I just wanted to wrap this video up really quickly by telling you that I think you can do it. This is going to be a great course. I think you'll learn a lot. It'll take a little bit of effort. It's not the class that you took in in, uh, in high school, you know, American government. It's a lot more intense. It's more intense because you're in college, but also because um, you have to know some of this crucial material. It's a really exciting and fun um, a, a fun course um, for most people. Now, if you have problems, reach out to me. I love teaching. That's why I'm here. Um, I was a consultant for many, many years, um, doing all sorts of research uh, on actually uh, mining industry and the forestry industry, designing research projects for them. And one of the reasons I'm back at a university is because I want to leave, leave a legacy of uh, lifelong learning for my kids, but also to help some of these students help, help you um, be better and to learn and see the world in a different way. If there's a way that I can I can do that or I can help you, please send me an email and engage me in some way. Uh, I appreciate that you're taking my class and I think you're gonna have a great time. Uh, I look forward to getting to know you through your essays, through your current events, and through whatever you're willing to, to share with me. So have a great time.